what we're seeing is we're seeing an awakening in this country and a returning to godly principles, godly morality. We've we've had we've we have no more tolerance. Tolerance is not a virtue in the Bible at all. Tolerance means to simply turn a blind eye to the convictions you once hold, held, and uh, that is going to be gone. We're not going to be tolerant of sin. We're not going to be tolerant of the woke agenda of the radical left. And Donald Trump will be the 47th president of the United States. That's very clear. People like, well, Bernie Sanders, Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, who's supposedly a Muslim, uh, but all she does is vote in favor of Democratic uh, legislature that is antithetical to biblical values. You have individuals like them that are definitely opposed and have an agenda to destroy Christian liberty, freedom, and the church. Second Amendment is in place for us to take up arms against a tyrannical government. Joining us now is Michael Shore, who looks like he's nice, warm, and toasty over in New Hampshire. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Because uh, you can't see my toes, Anna. Um, <laughs> the uh, no, it's uh, you know I, these are you know as you know a sample of the of the types of people and types of opinions we get waiting in line uh, with them for any kind of Trump event. Behind me, uh, just over my shoulder, is the hotel here in Nashua, New Hampshire, where Trump will be later tonight to accept what seems to be a victory in New Hampshire. Uh, the early returns and 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 calls have gone his way, uh, and so the people that are coming here tonight are the people who have volunteered for him, have worked for him, and, and, and have been invited here and, and entered lotteries to get tickets to be here tonight. So uh, these are the types of, types of people we've been spending a lot of time with. Now, so far, the numbers indicate that uh, Trump is very likely to win uh, the state of New Hampshire. But I am curious, did you come across any Nikki Haley supporters? Yeah, sure, we have. I mean, we, we've we've seen that. We, to be frank, we've been going to these Trump events to talk to them about what motivates them to come out for the former president. So we haven't spent a lot of time uh, following uh, Nikki Haley around or any of the other candidates. This has been focused on talking about this sort of MAGA movement and what goes into the MAGA mindset. Uh, but there are people both who have been open to uh, Nikki Haley and totally close to the possibility of her winning a primary. But what you're seeing out here and talking to these people is there's a belief system in place like we just heard from that gentleman who I spoke to last night in Laconia, New Hampshire. Uh, he, people believe that Trump will win unquestionably, and they're not even paying very much attention to the rest of the primary. Remember, New Hampshire voters of all stripes can vote in a Republican primary. So there was some- Here's the former UN ambassador now. People that maybe uh, some of these Democrats and independents push, push Nikki Haley over. In my opinion, Nikki Haley would have had to do really, really well tonight to make a difference in the race. And she did earlier today. Her campaign manager said they're in it for the long haul. But winning tonight would have been a, a better way to start that. So if she comes in at a strong second, do you think that she should continue uh, running in this primary? Uh, and what do you think about the possibility of her being the, the nominee should Trump be convicted and put in prison? Yeah, I mean, those are two heavy questions, Anna. I mean, the first is, uh, look, she can do what she wants. I always think that it's good to have competition in a race, especially when there is not an incumbent. But at any time, I think competition is good. It makes the leader better. Uh, I don't think that this campaign, the Trump campaign, is really acknowledging any of the substance coming from Nikki Haley. Uh, so I, I don't know. And I think that if Donald Trump can't stand for election, I've maintained this for a while, that I didn't think any of these seven or eight people who were originally on the um, on the uh, stage, we're going to be the nominee should he not be able to go in there. So I don't think it's going to go to an also ran, but I understand why that would keep Haley in the race. And if I was advising her, I would stay, I would say to stay in certainly until your home state of South Carolina, which is coming up on February 24th for the Republicans. But in, in terms of whether there's a viable path for any of them, if it's not going to be Donald Trump, I think it's going to be someone whose name has not been on any ballot yet. And that would be decided at a convention of Republicans. I would look at someone like Governor Brian Kemp. In Georgia, maybe uh, the governor here, Chris Sununu in New Hampshire, uh, maybe even Christy Noem in South Dakota, who could stand a good chance of being Trump's running mate if he is allowed to continue running. So the, the gentleman that you were talking about was like talking about these, you know, supposed religious beliefs that are driving uh, his politics, and uh, you you talked about how a lot of the Republicans like they believe this is kind of a foregone conclusion that Donald Trump is going to win. So I wanted to, to ask you about the feeling that you've gotten about some of the beliefs that have become quite common 
amongst Republicans in New Hampshire because it has this aura of being a sort of more reasonable, slightly less extreme state when it comes to conservatives. So in terms of like buying the narratives about the the results in the 2020 election or the legal challenges to Donald Trump or the the E. Jean Carroll um, you know uh, guilty verdict effectively that he already got. Um, do they buy any of this? Uh, are they just basically trusting whatever Trump is telling them? Like, has anything seemed to get through and make some of them question aspects of these storylines? The closest we've gotten, John, is to some of these people saying, well, you know, if he is convicted of any of these things, I would think about it. I would think about not supporting him. Maybe along the way, a couple of people have said, yeah, they wouldn't be able to support someone who's convicted. But in great part, these people know that that's built in. They think this has been a complete persecution of the former president. They think that these are unfounded. Many of them say the first thing he should do when he gets to office is pardon all the January 6th people. So you're dealing with people who are on the other side. Remember, as independent a streak as New Hampshire has, it was always a very conservative state for conservatives, right? So you you look back at people like Gordon Humphrey, you look back at uh, Bob Smith, who served as very conservative senators. John Sununu was the governor here. Back when conservative meant something that it means that doesn't really mean as much anymore. Uh, but here today, we had somebody who was vilifying neocons, and neocons used to be as conservative as you could get. Uh, our memory isn't, uh, isn't so short that we don't forget that from the Bush administration. So I, I think that you're looking at a flavor of Republicanism that has taken hold of this party for now, as we all know, and you know better than anybody. Uh, and, and I don't see that having gone away here. And, and look, they, they're not looking at these indictments as anything more than uh, part of the, the play between the two parties. They think it's all political persecution. And there's going to be very little that moves them off of that. You know, what's amazing to me is the disconnect between the gentleman that we heard you interview earlier and the hatred for neocons and the love for MAGA. Because Neocons were more representative of that Christian conservatism, the the social conservatism that came along with, you know, the the neocon branding of Republican politics. Whereas MAGA tends to be less socially conservative in some ways. I mean, certainly their leader, the leader of the MAGA movement loves sin. I mean, he he bathes in sin. He brags about sin. So it's just hilarious to hear this guy that you're talking to call out the sins that are being committed and how he's going to be intolerant towards sin while he's, you know, incredibly boastful about how he's supporting Donald Trump. I mean, how do you explain yeah. that disconnect? Well, I mean, part of it is that one thing that we forget is that built into religion, as much as they criticize sin and they cast out the sinner, is they also welcome the sinner back, right? Forgiveness is a big part of religion, and 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 they make amends for that. Uh, and 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 Trump himself has done his almost confession with a lot of the evangelicals that we saw in Iowa, and a lot of religious people here who who are for whom I mean, the the gentleman we just played before I came on the air is someone who prior to that moment's prior was leading uh, the line of people waiting to get in in a prayer. He's someone who after our interview, and it was a, an exhaustive and long and, and uh, interview, uh, he gave me a big hug, you know, and mm -hmm. said, call me when you're in Iowa City, you know. So that's part of this whole mindset that's here. But when you get down to what it is that motivates, I mean, you heard him talk about guns, you heard him talk about uh, religion, about tolerance not being in the Bible. That was one of the things that really sort of irked us. He said, there's no tolerance in the Bible. Bible. Uh, he said that we should not have pistols, we need machine guns for when the tyrannical government comes after us. So these sort of strong tenets are there. And the other part of it, you talked about the, the neocons, you asked about the neocons, Anna, mm -hmm. is that neocons are, are a part of the swamp, as it were. Mm -hmm. There are people that have been there for a very long time, and uh, you'll, you'll recall and you'll hear it ad nauseum for the rest of the year about draining the swamp again. And, and they, they frame it differently now, but they say the same words. Mm -hmm. I love the idea that Donald Trump has ever or would ever apologize for anything that he has done in his life. Um, but anyway, I, I am curious as you've been having these conversations with them, you mentioned the possibility, like I guess Christy Nome has come up, Governor Nome has come up as a possibility. Have there been other standout figures that have driven conversations about who he should choose? Is, is, it, is it Ramaswamy, is it Marjorie Green? Like who's actually generating some enthusiasm? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there is a recency bias and there's a geographical bias. So out in Iowa and South Dakota, you hear a lot about Christy Nome. You hear people who have just come to know Vivek Ramaswamy who say he would make a great running mate. 
Some people say Haley because she's been there in sort of governance before. You hear Tucker Carlson. Haven't heard too much about Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, but we're going to be heading south. I've heard Tim Scott recently uh, as well. So you, Lake? you hear the names. And, uh, yeah, there has been some Carrie Lake, and no okay. question that, that that name has come up. Uh, and then they say, oh, well, she, and of course, DeSantis came up. And then when I tell them that you can't be from the same state, uh, uh, two running mates can't be from the same state, they'll say, oh, I didn't know that, and they pick somebody else. But but the, 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 I, I do think that there is, um, you know, the normal, uh, as any party in any candidacy would have. And I think what, what, what either you or Anna were asking earlier about uh, who would come in should he not be there is a more fascinating conversation conversation than who the running mate would be because uh, we do that with all candidates every every cycle and we, we really don't know but I do think that that Christy Nome is somebody who's high on his list from people I've spoken to uh, who, who would know better than I that's super interesting Michael thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us uh, stay warm and uh, we'll talk to you in a little <laughs> we bit we will all right guys thanks thanks for watching if you become a member you get to watch all this ad free except for of course this ad still hit the join button below